Welcome to Amusement Sparks. This show is an opportunity for passionate people to hypothetically design theme parks. Each episode, I will bring on a guest to casually design a park for fun. We do not have the rights to any of these media franchises. Our show is just for fun and to use our imaginations in collaboration. On this episode, I will be talking to a friend of mine named Vince. You like Nintendo, is that correct? I do. I've got all the Nintendo systems currently, except for a Virtual Boy. I never got one of those. Yeah, that's that's hard to track down. I haven't played a Virtual Boy at all, but I remember when they were out. Um, it oh. seems cool. It seems like a cool collector's item. If you need to like try to get a complete set of all the games for one console, that's probably the one to do it for because it's so <laughs> yeah, limited. Yeah, there's, there's about six of them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's under exactly. A dozen. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, I mean. I think, was it Gunpei Yokoi, the guy who made the Game Boy, also created the Virtual Boy, and like he made the Game Boy, and everyone's like, you're the best guy ever, and honestly, he probably is, because the Game Boy's awesome, and then Virtual Boy came out, and they're like, uh, you're fired, <laughs> like, get out <laughs> now. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, um, so, this is a podcast, that's why we're recording this phone call, that's why I've gathered you all here today, um, is to do a little bit of amateur slash fan theme park design and uh it's it's not going to go anywhere i don't think they're actually going to make this park based on this podcast but it'd be pretty sweet uh i don't know just as a creative exercise and as a a conversation topic um i don't know to kind of go through that and see like what would our ideal nintendo theme park look like or amusement park or fun park whatever you want to call it fun fact about nintendo is they are actually making a theme park out of it but yeah. not, I don't think it'll be a full theme park, but it'll be a part of the Universal theme parks in the way that the Harry Potter is. Yeah. So it took everything for me to not Google it and be like, <laughs> what do other people think are good ideas for this? Right. <laughs> I, yeah, I did the same thing. I, today I was like, I feel like I should probably do some research for this. And I was like, I think for this podcast, the research is like within your own brain, your own creative space. Like you don't want to go see what's actually happening because... Sometimes reality is like a damper on your imagination. We want to talk about specifically with Nintendo, like the first party games, like the games that Nintendo created, because they, they've made consoles, so they, there's a lot of third party games, like games created by other companies and other creators, but we want to focus more on the ones that just Nintendo made, right? Right. What are your favorite first party Nintendo games? Well, I've got all the Zeldas. I've got... Probably all the Marios and most of the Metroids. And like people will always say to me, like, oh, oh, let's talk about video game stuff. And I'm like, well, unless we're talking about Nintendo, you kind of lost me because I don't even (laughs) really, you know, play a game that's not published by Nintendo. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I've played some and I like some. There are some for other systems even that I like. But it's like if it's got Nintendo's name on it, I'm going to play it. And that's also what I hate about Nintendo is because. Those games are so good, unlike the other systems where it's like, oh, this PS3 game that came out a couple years ago is now $5 at GameStop. <laughs> it's like, but Mario Kart is still forty nine ninety nine, and it came out a decade ago because yeah, it's, people are it's still going to buy it. Every, yeah, I, I feel like Nintendo games have the highest resale value. Like, you see every single generation of Pokemon is like, almost at retail price still even though you know it's been some of them go up after the fact though yeah (laughs) yeah but you're right nintendo almost every game that they made first party is just incredible whereas a lot of other consoles can't really claim that or they didn't make as many first party ones i think it's cool i think nintendo's done some some awesome stuff um and i agree with you too like like legend of zelda is probably my favorite franchise from nintendo but i also really love the mario series and metroid those Growing up with those three and with Pokemon, it was like that was those were like the best games ever, and they just so happen to be made by essentially the same company. It's a really cool like the, revelation. Essentially the same guy, like <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> yes, that's so true. Shigeru Miyamoto, he's a genius, absolutely. What do you want to start with? Like, there's a lot of uh, aspects that go into theme parks. Um, well, one thing that we can knock out right away and yeah. be done with is we know. <laughs> Every character will be a costumed character because yes. they've already kind of got those roaming around at different events and conventions and stuff. So you'll have your Mario and Luigi. I've seen Pikachu. I've seen Kirby. 
I'm sure mm-hmm. you could easily do a Samus and a Star Fox and all of those. Yeah, and Link could be cool. You I know, think. I mean, I think you know how Disney World's got Gaston. Yeah, and it's like he's just a buff looking dude. Right. That that guy. They're gonna poach that guy and get him to be Captain Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a buff hey, guy put with on a this costume. Helmet and yeah, he'll be Captain Falcon, and people will want to get their photo with you. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds sweet. I love the like walk around characters. I think those are awesome. And like I I have seen a lot of videos of the Pikachu's, like the kind of like chubby Pikachu costumes, like them doing different dance routines, and it's hilarious every time. Yeah, I saw one at a parade once, or like I saw a video of the parade where it's like a line of dancing Pikachu. (laughs) They're awesome. And as overplayed as Pikachu is, I still can't get over that design. I mean, if you're going to have one Pokemon, I'm okay with it being Pikachu. Like, I have several different Pokemon shirts, but one of them is just a Pikachu dress shirt. And I'm like, I know I'm not crazy about Pikachu, but he's just so cute and like so iconic. And I'm okay with that, even though he's not my favorite at all. He's he's almost like a 1990s Mickey Mouse, and that's <laughs> and that's what makes him perfect to be a guy. Well, you know, same as Mario was for the 80s and still is now. It's what makes yeah. him perfect to be running around an amusement park in a costume. That is an amazing concept. You're totally right. He is like the 90s Mickey Mouse, which I love. Mickey he is mouse a mouse. Too, by the way. I think technically yeah. he's an electric the electric mouse. mouse. Yeah, you're right. That's awesome. Cool. So we've got our characters walking around. Um, do you have any ideas for like a name of this property? Because there is that uh, Wii U game called Nintendo Land. Is that the name you would want to go I, for? Or? I don't think I don't think you can go wrong with that. And then I yeah. think within the park, mm-hmm. you can have it broken down even by section and have like Super Mario World and Donkey oh. Kong Country and you no know, Hyrule, I guess, for oh. Zelda. And and then of course you're gonna have games that aren't you know big enough to have their own world but you'll just Mm -hmm. squeeze those in wherever you can yeah that sounds awesome so and i was gonna say maybe nintendo world and you've got the lands within kind of the way disney's done it but um nintendo world isn't that a store like there's a store in new york called nintendo world store like there's 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 already nintendo land there's already nintendo world (laughs) but hey that's okay this is their theme park i mean it's a fitting name I love yeah. Donkey Kong Country. That caught me by surprise. I didn't see that coming. I was like, oh, that's actually really good because it's Donkey Kong Country. Like, it's the name of the game. It's that, That's really awesome. Cool. So we've got those different worlds. Go Or, the you know, Nintendo World with this different lands for the different properties. Let's see. What other... Are there other worlds we would want to do? There's, there's Hyrule, Mario World, or, you know, Super Mario World, whatever, and then Donkey Kong Country. What's the next biggest one, do you think? Maybe Metroid... Well, Metroid, I mean, Metroid's not really known for any of the places, though. I mean, you've yeah, got the different true. planets and stuff, mm-hmm. but no, I mean, Metroid fans would know them, and Nintendo fans maybe, but kids aren't like, I want to go to Planet Zebes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I think that is one of the more difficult ones to translate into a theme park atmosphere, because those games are so, like, atmospheric and moody and, like, uh, tense almost. Like, you feel yeah. isolated and lost, and then, like, you hear, Where's like... Where's my mom? <laughs> right, exactly. You hear carnival music and like kids laughing, and you're like, "This totally ruins this experience." So maybe there's like some kind of underground corridor that's you know Metroid inspired, like maze or something. That'd be cool. But I do think that yeah, a, a Met- while a property is awesome, the Metroid property, I think it would be kind of tricky to do a traditional theme park. Like you could do a cool escape room or some kind of like I said maze that'd be based on Metroid oh, um, also, or a haunted house kind I of mean, thing you- even. Yeah, well, you can have the ride. You'll have the ride for Metroid where you're yeah. sitting and moves slowly, and then on your car, you've got the thing to shoot at all the targets all around. Yeah. And then it can be dark and ominous inside as you go through. Then that you hop awesome. off and get back out into the real world where it's streaming children. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I really do like that because some theme parks um, have, like, you know, a laser tag section or, like, a kind of, like, dark a dark ride that's more atmospheric and a little bit more moody. So I think that that sounds pretty sweet for, for getting the Metroid treatment. Um, let's see. I was thinking, I watched this video about like, um, the best video game hub worlds, like worlds that connect you to all the different levels. And Mm -hmm. as I was watching that video, I was like, this would be kind of interesting if they, you know, designed like a theme park about this. Cause I'm super into theme parks, like the last several months, by the way, I don't really know why I'm just, I like having, something to brainstorm about and 
theme parks are just such a magical, whimsical thing. I'm like, I'm going to really get into these. But um, I, was, I was thinking about the Nintendo 64 in particular. That console was so awesome at the time. I think the graphics really grabbed me and made me feel like I was in the game, even though they're pretty low poly models. They're like not high-end graphics by any means anymore. But the first time you play Ocarina of Time, you're like, oh my god like this field goes on forever and you can see all the like it's like i'm in real it's like real life it's amazing and while hyrule wouldn't be the most thrilling thing to just kind of wander around um this big open field like you'd have to have horses for all the people or they just walk along this hot field it'd be kind of boring and uh everyone would get sunburnt but i think doing a uh, super mario 64 type world like a hub for a theme park would be really cool. Like Peach's Castle. How well, you like... I think the, the castle could be the center of attention like the castle yeah. is in Disney World, like Cinderella's Absolutely. Castle. But you have the mm-hmm. Nintendo 64 Peach's Castle. Yeah, that would be awesome. You got the little moat going on there. I God, that game, it's it's such a visceral thing. That I think because you're first like learning how to do three-dimensional controls in that game, it's like it makes you feel so immersed because it was like the first time I'd ever played a like three-dimensional platformer i was like these controls are so perfect it's like i'm controlling my own body (laughs) it's like i don't know there's something about it that really was super immersive and when you like can jump through the paintings it was like this is amazing i wish i could do this and (laughs) this is a really goofy idea but i was walking my dog earlier and i was like what if they did that as a theme park but um you see this painting and it's kind of like blurry looking but it's actually like a sheet of water like a uh waterfall kind of thing and you're mm-hmm. projecting the image of a painting on it. And then, I don't know, there's yeah. going to have to be some kind of backdrop so the projection doesn't just go on forever. So maybe on the other side of the waterfall is a black room. And they're projecting the painting onto this waterfall. And you, like, jump through it. And then when you're in there, you turn the corner from that black room and you're like, oh, hey, now I'm in this level. That's absolutely impractical. But I You think could it would maybe be do it as, amazing. like, part of the water park. People aren't right. just going to every day go, let's jump through some water to get to the next destination. Yeah. Well, I do think that's utterly uh, impractical, but it could be cool as, as a dark ride, maybe. You you can, uh, if it makes you feel like, or like a 4D theater kind of thing where you, you like feel like you're jumping through a painting somehow, it could be really cool. Um, or yeah. not. <laughs> it was just something I was letting my mind water and wander well, into. Well, we'll let it first and we'll see how you like it before we all get on <laughs> yeah that's that sounds like a plan um <laughs> the other thing that i always remember about that castle is i don't remember where this is but there's like at some point some staircase where you cannot get to the top of it oh, and like yeah. no matter how long you, you have run, 70 stars in order to get to the bowser otherwise it's just an endless staircase yeah and i always thought that was just a joke or something i'm like this is just like a joke like there's no way to ever get up this. I thought it was impossible. For some reason, that part of the game always stuck with me. Like, if I think about that game, that's probably the main thing I'm thinking of is trying to jump fast enough to, like, get up those stairs, and it's just impossible. So, <laughs> this is a so dumb you idea, too. incorporate a Stairmaster for children? Oh, yeah, like, it, you know. You if, just uh, keep going forever, kids. It's fun. It's called exercise. Yeah, you know how theme parks always have, like, super high-calorie food that's just unhealthy for you? Like, after you get that, you got to go on the, like, endless <laughs> Stairmaster thing. I think the best way to get kids to do anything is to tell them that there's a prize waiting for them at the top. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, you can say, like, we've got a, a brand-new roller coaster, uh, and there's no line. All you got to <laughs> do is <laughs> run up the stairs. <laughs> it's kids the only. The stairs so... are the lines. See, there's no line. Yeah, your parents will be waiting for you right down here, all right? Go ahead. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> so then you're going to have all the lawsuits of the kids that passed out trying to run up an endless stairs. That's true, because once they fall and start rolling, you know, it, it's not going to stop. Not for a long time. Uh, yeah, that's that's rough. <laughs> um, okay, so those were two kind of goofy ideas in a row, but uh, it just shows how important Super Mario 64 is. That game stuck with me forever. And I do think that world and that like color palette and everything would translate really well to an amusement park.